Hello everyone. We have a 43 year old man who come to you due to six month history of intermittent upper abdomen pain associated with nausea. The patient prescribe episode of full epigastric pain that are usually worse 15 to 30 minutes after meals and last for few hours. Well, uh, patient, this pain improve with leaning forward is a very, very important clue. Make it especially note at this point. Patient has lost six significant out of weight. For last five years ago, he was hospitalized for three days with acute abdomen pain. Patient smokes a pack of cigarettes a day, consume alcohol daily. Well, his blood sugar is also high, which the following is most likely indicate diagnosis for the patient conditions. Well, the answer to this question is CT scan of the abdomen is the best option after all these. First of all, what the problem is with the patient is a case of acute chronic pancreatitis. How can you say like this? Well, what are the features? First of all, he is a chronic alcoholic consumption include prolonged use of... Now remember, when we talk about pancreatitis, even socially acceptable amount also, if taken for a long time, can be disposed to pancreatitis. He consumes alcohol almost daily. Chronic pancreatitis typically present with chronic epigastric discomfort. Well, in the patient has episodes of dull epigastric pain. Now, it typically it can radiate to back. Acute pancreatitis usually radiate, but in this case also the, it can uh, radiate to back. Partly relieved by sitting or upright or leaning forward, like in this case also, the, the pain improve or leaning forward. It's a very important point. Patient can have intermittent pain-free interval for month to years. So remember, the six-month history of intermittent upper down pain is there. So they are all typical feature of chronic pancreatitis. Now, early CP, of course, when we say chronic, every chronic has to start with acute. Very obvious. Acute only will become chronic. Basic concept. So acute attack usually has a continuous pain and he was hospitalized five years ago. He was hospitalized for three days for acute abdomen. Maybe five years back he had acute pancreatitis and which later on became chronic in due course of time. Now, when the CP develops progressive pancreatic inflammation that causes non-reversible exocrine as well as endocrine dysfunction. So when we say exocrine dysfunction, that will lead to diarrhea, steatoria, weight loss, all due to exocrine. Okay, and due to fat malabsorption from reduced level of exocrine, the pancreatic enzyme, amylase protease, patient lost good amount of weight in the last 12 months, all due to uh, exocrine dysfunction. And endocrine dysfunction also, his blood sugar level is high. So we are getting both exocrine and endocrine dysfunction in this case. But is it enough to diagnose? No way. This is not. When you are really want to diagnose, you have to go for, you have to look for pancreatic calcification. This you can see in abdominal film x-ray or you can see CT scan. So that's and when we, CT scan it also rule out other possibility of pancreatic pseudosis and uh, pancreatic cancer. Hence, the best answer of this case is CT abdomen. Now, what do you get in CT abdomen? Typical calculi. Look into this. Plenty of calculi is very, I am enlarging the picture for you. You can see plenty of small, small calculi are there. Let me clear it. I hope you can see it. Okay, innumerable small calci quick calculi in the pancreas is a virtually diagnostic investigation. Look into this one more. Look into this one, uh, one more picture showing a lot of calcification. So, so finally, CT or check a CT scan or X ray abdomen if showing calcification in the pancreas is virtually diagnostic. Now, let's look into other option anti tissue transglutaminase antibody. They are typically positive in celiac disease. They can cause, now in celiac disease, there can be iron deficiency anemia, steatoria, weight loss because iron is absorbed in proximal ileum and celiac disease is a disease of proximal ileum.
As for GIT symptoms are minor, they only occur when patients take gluten containing food. And the gluten containing food is the mnemonic is bro, barley, rye, oat, wheat. Is a numeric for gluten containing food. So the patient has GIT symptom whenever he take any food element of gluten containing. When they stop it, the GI symptom disappear. Well, moreover, significant abdominal pain relieved by position change is not seen in celiac disease. But now I have certain questions for you. Write down the answer. This celiac disease occur in which age group? Question one, two. Which HLA are associated with celiac disease? And option C, which skin disease is associated with celiac disease? And believe me, these are the universal questions asked in all the exams throughout the world, whichever exam you write. Write down the answer. Well, as far as age group by modal presentation, it may occur in infancy when weaning occurs. Weaning occurs means milk is stopped and cereal are added. Or second age is in the age of 50 to 60 year. So elder there are two age groups this can happen. Which HLA DQ2 is there in 95% and DQ8 is in 10%. Which skin disease? Dermatitis herpetiform is again throughout the world, whichever exam you write. If they talk about dermatitis herpetiform is, celiac disease will be always there in your question. So golden line to remember is her diabetes, uh, dermatitis herpetiform is, is equal to celiac disease. Golden line to remember. Okay, celiac disease. Right. So we move further. Option B, cancer associated antigen 199 level. They, it is there in pancreatic cancer. But they like pancreatic cancer present with abdominal pain, weight loss, jaundice. This level should not be used to diagnose suspected pancreatic cancer due to limited sensitivity and specificity. And abdominal CT scan is usually the first, even if you are thinking about uh, pancreatic cancer, abdominal CT is the first, not CA-99. Mesentic angiogram can be done for chronic mesentic ischemia. Now, this patient, they have a dull abdominal pain, usually after eating, and unintentional weight loss due to avoidance of food. Because the patient knows the moment I eat, I will have pain. So that's why they tend to lose weight. Most cases are due to atherosclerosis for which the patient has no significant risk factor as our patient concern. Diarrhea and improvement in pain with position change are uncommon in these patients. They are classically seen in chronic pancreatitis. Now let me show you angiogram, mesentic angiogram. You can see this is angiogram has been done and these are the area which has been blocked. You can see lot of vasculature here and there's hardly any vasculature on this side. Serum lipase level well, in case of acute pancreatitis, a lot of inflammation is there and that lead to that can lead to patchy inflammation and fibrosis uh, occurs in, in CP because by the time CP occurs, it is already burnt out pancreas. So that's why in acute pancreatitis, these are raised, but they can be normal or only slightly elevated in, in chronic pancreatitis. Abnormal imaging showing pancreatic calcification is the best way to confirm chronic pancreatitis, not lipase. Well, a quick recap of the last minute division point. Overview of chronic pancreatitis, etiology, alcohol use, citric fibrosis in children, ductal obstruction, malignancy stone or autoimmune sometime. The clinical presentation, chronic epigastric pain with an intermittent pain-free interval, Malabsorption and diabetes mellitus, that is hyperglycemia can occur. That indicates exocrine as well as endocrine dysfunction. Amylase lipase can normal or non-diagnostic. 
CT scan or MRCP, that is MRI, uh, medical resonance, cholangiopancreatography, show calcification, dilated duct, and enlarged pancreas. Treatment, pain management, alcohol and smoking cessation, frequent small meal, pancreatic enzyme supplement. Golden line to remember, chronic pancreatitis is a chronic inflammatory disorder of the pancreas. Correctized by recurrent bout of upper and abdominal pain, diarrhea, steatoria, weight loss. Diagnosis established by presence of pancreatic calcification on CT or X-ray abdomen. But this is one of the most important diagnostic criteria. Whenever you will be getting question on chronic pancreatitis, this element will be there. And it is there is the diagnostic. Again, remember golden line to remember. Golden line. That means the pancreatic calcification is equal to chronic pancreatitis. Such is simple. So the entire, this is squeezed into just one word. Pancreatic calcification is chronic pancreatitis. Golden line to remember. Well, I hope you like the session. Just to inform you, we have following courses for you. Smart Medicine. There are 350 hours of pre-recorded video lecture of whole internal medicine. It includes all super specialty and allied subject covering A to Z including basic concept about every topic. Second, we have tests and discussion. There are more than 1000 questions which, with discussion of the questions, sample question and discussion you saw in this session. Now, third thing is Medicine Simplified, which is a textbook of medicine. Harrison is the ultimate book to read medicine, but it is too vast. Reading one page of Harrison, you need half an hour. To understand, you need two hours, but you need only two minutes to forget what was written in that page. Then what is the solution? We have Medicine Simplified. It's a textbook of medicine, but so-called mini Harrison. It's a summary of what you need to read from Harrison. The book is available in Amazon also. Now, these three things are more than enough for your MD, DNB medicine and family medicine final exam preparation, need SS exam preparation. You don't need to read any other book. These three are complete in all the aspects. For more detail, you can contact at this number. It's a mobile ad as well as WhatsApp. And this is my personal email ID. Anybody want to reach to me, you can contact me at this email ID. Thank you very much.